Hello guys, I'm Dr. Thompson, the instructor of the T-Square OET Academy. You are welcome to my channel. And uh, if you are visiting my channel for the first time, I would really advise you to hit the subscribe button below so that you'll be subscribed to my channel. Anytime I release any video, you will be the first to be notified. And if you already subscribed to my channel, there you can always visit the community section of this channel every day i do release um, a quiz that you can that can help you to boost your writing um, skills you will definitely benefit uh, from that i bet you so let's uh, go to what we have today we'll be discussing um how best we can write the introduction of our letters all right in OET letter writing, you really need to get the purpose of the letter clearly because as part of your assessment, you are assessed, you are marked on the purpose of the letter. So if you missed out the purpose of the letter, that means uh, that would definitely affect uh, your score negatively. So what I'm going to do today is this. I am going to um, teach you how you can write the introduction of a referral letter that of a transfer letter and also that of a discharge letter so but before we do that let's see things that we can include in our letter when you are giving a letter what are the things that you are supposed to include first is the main complaint or what we call the chief complaint or we can say the diagnosis that you established for the patient or we can say what exactly did you do for the patient what you managed the patient for so it actually varies depending on whether you are writing a referral letter a discharge letter or a transfer letter now when a case note is given to you there is a reason in that case note why you think you as a doctor a nurse a pharmacist whatever medical profession you are you were not able to manage this patient any longer and you decided to refer this patient so that's the main uh, that's what we call the chief complaint or the main complaint or the diagnosis why you why you think this patient will need a referral so you should add that in your introduction another thing to include in your introduction is the current situation or you can say the progress of the patient of the patient so far so this patient you are referring is the condition getting worse is the condition getting better has the patient made a remarkable progress or is the patient condition deteriorating so you should add this too in your introduction another thing that you need to also add in your introduction is this you should try as much as possible to make the introduction of your letter to make the type of your the, the type of letter you are writing to be very obvious in your introduction if you are writing a referral letter, make it very obvious to the reader. If you are writing a transfer letter, make it very obvious to the reader. If you are writing a discharge letter, also make it very obvious to the, to the reader. Okay. Then the last point that you also consider, which is also very, very crucial and very important to, your, to the introduction, is the purpose. What exactly do you want the reader to do for this patient? That's what I mean by the papers. What exactly? Are you referring this patient so that the reader will monitor and support this patient? Are you referring this patient so that it, the reader will, um, will assess and manage this patient? What exactly do you want the reader to do for this patient? You should try as much as possible to add it in the introduction. Now, these things that you are going to add, this, these two things, there are basic two things that you have to add. This is the summary of this whole thing is this, that you should try as much as possible to make the reason for the introduction and the purpose of the introduction to be very clear. These two things must always be in your introduction, meaning the reason why you think this patient, you can no longer manage this patient and this patient requires um and this patient requires um, a help from another um healthcare worker should be very clear now 
the purpose of the letter, what exactly you now want the healthcare worker to do for this patient that you are transferring or that you are discharging or that you are referring. What exactly do you want them to do? You should include it in your introduction. So your introduction is like a window into the letter that you are going to write. So you should try as much as possible to make a very concise summary of the whole um, letter. And by doing this, it's just for you to take note of these two things. By the time you include the reason and the purpose of the letter, you the letter would have been summarized. Okay, so we are going to take this um, introductions one after the other. So we are going to start with a uh, transfer letters. Let's um, look at this case note. All right, um, let's look at this case note. If you look at this case note, this is the case note of uh, Tyler Walsh, um, a 33 year old lieutenant who lost his, his legs five years ago and has been suffering from depression. Now, to write this introduction, the first thing you are supposed to do from this letter is first of all to go to the writing task. So let's scroll down to the writing task and see what exactly um and see what we are meant to do or we are asked to do so let's um, look at the writing task okay here is the writing task from the writing task using the information given in the case note write a transfer letter to dr smith robert a new local gp assigned to see this patient assigned to see the patient in the UK, address the letter to Dr. Smith Roberts, Meadows General Practice, and so on and so forth. So from this writing tax, what exactly are we asked to do? We are asked to write a transfer letter. So now we've actually gotten the type of letter we are asked to write. So remaining three points. What next are we to do again? The next thing we have to find is what is the diagnosis or what is the chief complaint of this patient? Well, let's scroll. If we scroll through, let's go up a little and check for the diagnosis or the chief um, complaint. Now, looking at this letter, well, looking at this letter, even from the from the notes you are giving here, you are a GP in the military camp. Tala Watch is a 3 year old lieutenant who lost his, um, his legs um, five years ago and has been suffering from um, depression. So that means this patient uh, had, uh, let's see. Okay. From the case notes, if we actually look at the treatment, the treatment record okay multiple gunshot in, injury injuries on both lower limbs femoral fracture of both legs had above the knee bilateral amputation on wheelchair so this patient had bilateral bilateral um, knee amputation okay and it's an and this above um, the knees okay now, if you also look at in the next feeling depressed, the patient started getting <clears throat> depressed. So let's even see today's, um, today's visit. Okay, the patient is relocating to the UK to, to the UK to stay with family, worried about his health and that he may relapse, no new symptoms, mood normal, no psychosis symptoms. So to transfer patient to a local GP, in the UK, recommend a support group, encourage compliance, recommend a psychiatrist for follow up and continue on central link. So, by just uh, scanning through this letter, it's obvious that this patient um, had um, amputation of the of um, his legs. Okay, and uh, he also suffered because from here we can say it's depressive psychosis is also suffered from a depression so these like the two things that this whole um, stuff is all about because if you look at here we are transferring for the patient to see a psychiatrist meaning we are worried about the depression that the patient um, 
um, is having or was diagnosed. Okay. Now, what other thing are we still going to look at again? How has the patient progressed so far? That's the third point. The first point is we've actually um, we've actually known the type of letter we are writing, which is a transfer letter. We've um, um, looked out for the chief complaint or the diagnosis. Here, the patient had bilateral um, amputation of the leg, and then also uh, was diagnosed of depression. Now, the third thing that we are now going to look at for is the progress of this patient um, so far. So let's see if we can get a clue from, okay, from the last visit, they say no psychotic symptoms, mood normal. So that means the patient is relatively stable or the patient has uh, progressed well or the patient has made some uh, remarkable um, improvements. Okay, so what's now the purpose of this letter? Why are we referring this patient to this um, to this local GP. Now you can now see here that um, we are we are we are transferring this patient. We are transferring this patient. One is because the patient is relocating. The patient will no longer be in his present uh, location. He's relocating now to UK, and um, we want the GP. We want the GP to support to support this patient and also continue and take over this patient uh, management, basically. So we've highlighted these four points. So the next thing we are going to do now is to write, um, is to write the introduction. Now, let's see how we can write this introduction in different ways. All right, um, now, if you look at the first um, sample, Mr. Wash is relocating to the UK to live with his family. I'm here by writing to transfer his management into your care. He has been suffering from depression after he had a traumatic leg injury that made him to lose his legs. Now, three out of those four points are in this introduction. Number one is um, the transfer. Here we use, um, I'm writing to transfer. And this word relocating also shows that uh, it's a transfer letter. Secondly, we highlighted the chief complaints, the reason why we think um, this patient will need the services of uh, the reader. We highlighted them here. We say he has been suffering from depression after he had a traumatic leg injury that made him to lose his legs. Now, we also highlighted what exactly we want the reader to do for this patient we said here we want him to we are transferring his management into his care so we want the reader to take, take over the management of this patient and we've made it very obvious because it's a transfer letter that this patient is relocating okay this is one sample the the there were supposed to be four points the, the fourth point that is not here, which is usually more important in discharge letter, um, is the progress of the patient so far. So we didn't include it in this um, in this um, introduction. If you also note, I used them um, three sentences. This is the first sentence. This is the second sentence, and this is the third sentence. Now, I always advise uh, my students to always use at least two sentences don't use one when you use one you tend to miss out some important points gathering these four points that's supposed to be in your introduction might not be easy including everything in just one um, sentence so it's actually safer to use either two or three sentences i'm not more than three sentences okay so let's uh, look at um, um the second uh, sample for this particular letter too. I'm writing to introduce Mr. Walsh, a 33-year-old lieutenant who has been assigned to you for further management. He lost his lower limbs five years ago and subsequently developed depression, which he is being managed for. So this is another way you can also write this case note. 
Here, I said I'm introducing because this is a new patient with this GP. So I am writing to introduce this patient to this new GP. And uh, what I want the GP to do for this patient is for this patient for further management. He has been assigned to him for further management. And what's the reason? He lost his lower limbs five years ago and subsequently he developed depression, which he's been managed for. Okay, here I I included everything in this um, in this uh, particular um, introduction. Okay, so um, okay, let's see, let's be sure that I included everything. Number one, he what is being managed for that's the purpose. The reason um, he lost his lower limbs and um, developed a depression. Now I use the word introduce because this is like the first time the the reader will be seeing the the patient, and I said the patient has been assigned. Okay, uh -huh. so it's not very clear here to say, but to some extent it appears to be a transfer a transfer letter but it's not actually very clear in this uh, particular in introduction but the two main thing which is the reason and the purpose of the letter they are very clear in this uh, introduction so let's um, because this is a transfer letter so let's see the next uh, in another introduction Okay, here I said, thank you for accepting to take over the management of Mr. Walsh, a 33-year-old lieutenant who um, has been transferred to live with family in the UK. His lower limbs were amputated five years ago and he subsequently became depressed. He is currently stable on antidepressants. So this introduction is very beautiful. It con it's the four points that I highlighted earlier are all in this introduction. Number one, the type of letter is clear. Here is a transfer letter. Number two, the chief complaint or the diagnosis the patient has was amputated and has suffered and is suffering from depression. It's also here. The progress of the patient so far, he is currently stable on antidepressant. It's also here. What exactly I want the, the reader to do? I want the reader to take over the management of Mr. Wash. So these four points, they are all in this um, introduction. Okay. So if I were writing this letter, I would prefer to go with this introduction. The first two that I also wrote, they are not still bad because the main thing that is that are required in your introduction, which, which are the reason and the purpose are in that um, introduction. So let's um, go to the next type of uh, letter writing, which is um, the discharge letters. So let's um, get um, let's go back to the case notes and get a case note for a discharge letter and see what we are asked to write, and then we can decide how the introduction um, would be. So let's take a look at the case notes. All right. If we look at this case note, this is um, this is um, the case note of uh, Miss Samantha George, um, a 45-year-old patient in neurology ward where you are working as a doctor or a nurse. Now, whenever you are giving the case note, what are you supposed to do? First is to look at um, the writing task. So let's go to the writing task and see what. Um, we are meant to write. Let's go to the writing task and see what you are meant to write. So this is um this case note is uh, pretty okay. This is the writing task. Now from the writing task, using the information given in the case note, write a discharge letter to the patient GP for a follow-up management. So at least we can get two things from this uh, this writing task. From the writing task, we've already known the type of letter we are writing. It's a discharge letter. And also the purpose is for follow-up management. Okay, so we are now looking at for, for two things. One is the reason, as that's uh, the, what we manage the patient for, as this is a discharge letter. So we'll be looking for what we manage the patient for. And then, um, the, the last point will now be the progress of the patient uh, 
um, so far. So let's scroll a little bit and see if we can get this uh, two pieces of um, information. So let's um, let's see. Okay. All right. So the patient was discharged, was um, admitted on this day, discharge on these days. I uh, was the diagnosis made um, right sided um, um, stroke. Let's still be very sure in the case note. So, patient presented with this and this, and plan was to admit and all that. So, you see the, the following how long the patient spent in the hospital. Okay, here again, we are seeing that. Um, Okay, low mood, severe depression, they send consult to psychiatrist, psychiatrist uh, confirm severe depression. Okay, let's look at what we are asked to do today. Now, um, ambulate with a framework, mood improved, stitches removed. That means the patient has actually made some improvements, okay? From this, um, from this, it's obvious that the patient has actually made uh, some uh, some improvements so that means um okay we are discharging patients home um for monitoring and support okay all right so we've actually gathered everything this patient had right sided stroke and also had depression uh, we manage these patients for these two things and um, the patient has actually made some improvements and it's obvious we are writing what we are writing a discharge letter so what are we going to do let's see how we can write this all right let's look at um let's take a look at this i'm writing to discharge miss jones back into your care for follow-up she was managed for a right uh, sided stroke complicated by depression and has made a remarkable improvement okay here we use two sentences in the first sentence, we'll try to, to make it obvious, the type of letter we are writing, which is a discharge letter. And we'll try to make it obvious to the purpose of the letter we are writing for follow-up, for the GP to follow up. Now, we also highlighted the reason or what we manage the patient for, the chief complaint, what we manage the patient for, right side day stroke that was complicated by depression. And we also made it clear the progress that the patient has made and we said the patient has made a remarkable improvement. So if you can see in this discharge letter, the four points I mentioned earlier, they are all in this, uh, in this one. So let's look at another um, sample. Another student may decide to write his or hers this way. Your patient, Miss June, had a right-sided stroke followed by depression. She was treated accordingly and has made some remarkable improvements. She's being discharged back into your care for follow-up. All right. Um, if you look at this too, the reason for discharging this patient, what you manage this patient for, I meant to say, um, that's actually the reason anyway. Um, is clearly written here. The patient had the right-sided stroke followed by depression. <clears throat> And then she was treated accordingly and had made remarkable improvements and made some remarkable improvements. Uh, that's the progress of the patient so far. You let it, you also made it clear. The type of letter you are writing, you use the word discharged here. It shows you are writing a discharge letter. And then what exactly you want the reader to do for the patient for follow up. So you can see this discharge letter contains the four points that should be in your um, introduction. So let's see another sample. Okay, let's look at this third sample. I would like to inform you that your patient, Miss Jones, has made a good recovery after she was treated for a right-sided stroke that tilted her into depression. I'm discharging her back to you for monitoring and support. Now, if you look at this too, we talked about the progress, a good recovery. We talked about what the patient was managed for, stroke and depression. 
and uh, we made it clear the type of letter discharging and what we want the reader to do for the patient monitoring and support that's um, um, follow up so what you are going to do now we are going to go to the next type of letter that's the referral letters the referral letters are usually in two formats it, they can either be in cool in a you can have a code case you can also have a referral kit so let's go back to the case notes and get a, a code case and see how we write the introduction of a code referral letter all right um looking at this case note this is the case note of uh, mr taylor white okay so the first thing first we go to the um Okay, just note that the patient, um, Mr. Taylor White, is, uh, is a patient in your general practice. So let's go to the writing task and see what we are, we are asked to do. So from the writing task, using the information given in the case notes, write a referral letter to Dr. Ben Jones. Okay, now we are writing to an endocrinologist. So we've um, already gotten the type of letter we are asked to write that's a referral letter that's one point the second point we look at for what is the reason what does the chief complaint or what you're managing the patient for or what the, the we are treating the patient for so here now usually for referral letters of the last visit which is the today's visit that's where you usually look at for to see your last diagnosis you, you maybe you would have made one or two previous diagnoses before but the recent the most recent diagnosis is the one you go for now we are not sure of the diagnosis is like a presumptive we are suspecting or um, we are not too sure this is like presumptive diagnosis so and from this presumptive diagnosis we are suspecting that this patient has type 2 diabetes mellitus so that's the reason and what's the purpose of this is for further evaluation and treatment that's what we want the reader to do okay okay now from here still no improvement no lifestyle the patient has not made any improvement it's still the same thing so the four points we've already gotten the four points so let's see how um okay we can just scroll through the scroll through this letter okay this is the writing tab can actually scroll through this letter and see how the letter if there are any other information that uh, we think uh, we can add although we've gotten the information that we need so let's see say brick layer hobbies dancing blah 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 smokes um visited the first time for meeting abdominal pain treated for acute watery trial that came again so truth frequent urination of at night um did some tests blood sugar tests okay okay and then today so let's see let's see how we can write this now yes, um look at this first sample i'm writing to i am writing to refer mr white to you for further evaluation and treatment his clinical features and laboratory findings are suggestive of type 2 diabetes mellitus with retinal involvement okay so three out of the four points we listed earlier are all here number one we use the words refer that show the type of letter the reason the clinical features of this patient and the laboratory findings are suggesting that this patient has that type 2 diabetes mellitus with retinal involvement now the third what we want the reader to do we want the reader to further evaluate and treat this patient so the major the two main points the reason and the papers they are in this introduction and uh, in addition to that we made it clear the type of letter we are writing which is a referral letter the point that is not here is the progress of the patient uh, so far of which from that letter there was no progress at all so let's see sample two Thank you for seeing Mr. White, whose clinical features and um, blood sugar results are most likely in keeping with type 2 diabetes mellitus with retinopathy. B 
be looking at my chance of word, we are not sure of that diagnosis. So we don't want to say that they are in keeping with. So we just decide to say they are most likely in keeping with because it's like a preliminary diagnosis, not a definitive diagnosis. I'm referring him to you for further review and management. Here again, the type of letter is clear, referring what you manage the patient for or the chief complaints, the clinical features and the blood sugar results are likely in keeping with type 2 diabetes mellitus with retinopathy. What we want the reader to do for this patient, we are referring him for we are referring this patient to the reader for review and uh, management. So let's take a look at the, this third sample. Okay, Mr. White is being evaluated for type 2 diabetes mellitus with eye complication. I'm referring him to you for further assessment and treatment. <coughs> let's see this. <coughs> the fourth one. I'm writing to refer Mr. White for your evaluation and management. He presents with clinical features and laboratory findings in keeping with type 2 diabetes mellitus. So this patient is still having these clinical features, okay, and these laboratory findings. So that's why I use the word he presents. If these clinical features are no longer there, it would be wrong for me to say he presents. I would say the patient presented and was managed, something like that. But this patient still has this clinical feature. That's what I'm saying. He presents with clinical features and laboratory findings in keeping with type 2 diabetes mellitus. Here again, the word refer show that this is a referral letter. <clears throat> what we want the reader to do is for to evaluate and manage the reason. These are the, the clinical features and laboratory findings are keeping with this. Here again, the progress wasn't included. Now, so let's go to the <coughs> final type of letter. Sorry, a minute. <coughs> so, um, referral letter, urgent cases. This, um, <coughs> the type of letter that you should uh, you should learn to write okay you usually have this in OET, in OET letter writing so for all the letters that you always have in in OET exam they can either be a discharge a transfer referral letters which can either be urgent or or um, a code case so try to learn how to write this uh, especially the referral letters they are the most uh, um, common ones. So now let's see, let's go back to our case notes and see what, um, and look at this uh, case. All right, um, this is the case note of uh, James Brown. It's a patient in your GP practice. So let's go to the writing task first so that we'll know what to, to do. So from the writing task, using the information given in the case notes, write a letter to the casualty officer at this hospital. So immediately you hear a casualty officer or a letter going to the emergency department or patients who need an admission, most times this type of letter are urgent letters. They always make it very clear um, in your writing. They can even use the word write an urgent letter, although it was not used in this case. So. But any letter going to the emergency department, just know that uh, it's an urgent letter. So why is this urgent? All right, so why are we writing this urgent letter in the first place? Now, let's look at the reason. The patient um, has um, a perforated pept peptic ulcer. Okay, the patient has a perforated um, peptic um, ulcer. So, and... Um, is endoscopy confirmed that diagnosis according to this uh, according to this letter so let's see okay um today rushed in today in painful distress vomited frank aha so you can also get some things that will that you include that will make that will make the urgency of the letter to be clear in your introduction so 
here we will not be talking about uh, if the patient has made any improvement or anything here because uh, this is today's um, presentation and uh, the patient was just diagnosed today that uh, uh, he has a perforated peptic ulcer and we are urgently referring this patient to the emergency department probably for further um okay here they say we, we, the purpose for this is requesting for further assessment and surgical intervention okay so let's see how we, we will write this all right uh, let's look at this first uh, sample i'm writing to refer mr brown to you for urgent evaluation and treatment already we're already making it very urgent here yeah? we use the word urgent evaluation and treatment okay he was rushed in today we are also seeing the urgency here again he was rushed in today in painful distress okay and was evaluated to have a perforated peptic ulcer so the tone of your writing is very important in an urgent letter because this is an urgent letter the way you would write letter later is also different from the way you write code referral letter i'm going to teach you that but that that will not be in uh, um, today i'm going to teach you that in uh, in our next uh, um, class all right so here again the type of letter is obvious here it's a referral letter and we made it very clear that it's an urgent referral letter the what you want the reader to do for this patient we want the reader to evaluate and treat this patient urgently and um, the reason why we think this patient will need an urgent attention is written here clearly and the tone that we use that the patient was rushed in today in painful distress I was evaluated the diagnosis perforated peptic ulcer. So this is a very nice introduction. So let's go see this another sample. Let's look at this sample. Thank you for seeing Mr. Brown, whose clinical features and endoscopy findings are consistent with a perforated peptic ulcer. Your urgent assessment and surgical intervention would be appreciated. Now, again, we are using that urgent to show that this is an urgent case. And what you want the reader to do to assess and um, intervene here. And then what's the reason? The clinical features and the endoscopy findings, they are consistent with a perforated peptic ulcer. Okay. All the points, they are all here. Remember, those four points, just three that they are here. Because the last point where I said the, the progress of the patient so far. Will not be necessary here now all right let's look at this one again i would like to request that you urgently assess mr brown whose clinical features and endoscopy findings are in keeping with a perforated peptic ulcer he would benefit from your surgical intervention this is a very nice one. I would, I would like to request that you urgently assess Mr. Brown. So that urgency is here. Whose clinical features and endoscop endoscopy findings are in keeping with a perforated peptic ulcer. The reason it's also here. The patient has perforated peptic ulcer. He would benefit from your surgical assessment um, treatment. We want them the reader to assess we want the reader to also do a surgical so it's embedded in this um, introduction so this um, also a nice one then the type of letter one we ask there is no place to show whether this is a referral letter or something now look at this word request okay when you are you that's what differentiates between a referral letter and a transfer letter in a transfer letter the whole patient management is transferred to another doctor but in a referral letter you are making a particular request for a patient, what will be done for a patient after which, after the treatment, the patient is still coming back to you as your patient. Okay, so um, I think um, with this, with, with what we've done so far, you should be able to know what to do when you are writing a, any letter in OET. So in summary, remember that I said 
you should either use two sentences or three sentences in introduction if you want to get those four points, three to four points right. Okay, depending on the type of letter that you are writing. Again, avoid details. If you carefully look at all the introduction, all my introductions, you cannot see where I'm writing details that the patient presented with bleeding, blindness or blame, all those, they are not in the introduction. Summarize, the, the introduction should be a concise um, um, piece of work. So you shouldn't include irrelevant things, details that you have to put in the body of the, of the, of the letter, you are now bringing them up in the introduction. Again, make the type of letter obvious, just as I've told you, if you're writing a discharge letter, transfer letter, a referral letter, make it obvious. In these two things, if there is those four things that I've highlighted, if there is something that will not miss out in your introduction, these two things, the reason and the purpose. The reason usually the chief complaints, the diagnosis, the what you manage the patient for, the purpose, what exactly you want the reader to do for the patient, maybe for a follow-up management, maybe to teach the patient to assess or whatever. So guys, um, it's been nice talking with you guys and um, I think I will come to the end of this um, tutorial. Please guys, kindly subscribe to my channel if you've not done that before. And they also invite your friends too to visit my channel to and also like and share my channel to others. If you want to reach out to me, you want to contact me, you can reach out to me via this. All right, guys, thank you very much. Bye-bye.